Hello everyone and welcome to Day Trader S&P 500, a rare Sunday morning, August 4th edition of the um, YouTube channel, Day Trader S&P 500. This is Dale Woodson, editor of Woodson Wave Report Newsletter and this YouTube channel. I wanted to tell you guys about our triggers and targets. We had a lot of people try the free trial for the month of July. Uh, now we're running a special offer to... Um, receive $44 off of the $144 monthly price for every month of the subscription, running that for a very limited time. You can see how our triggers and targets have produced points and potential profit. Uh, lots of people are doing very well with this um, service, if you will. And uh, here's how you can get it. You just go to our website and go to the uh, register link right here that'll bring up this page put in all your info there there's the triggers and targets uh, discount code is 44 so if you type 44 in there it'll take 44 dollars off of that 144 dollar price for every month for the life of the subscription so we'll hit apply there and you can see right there total today is 100 dollars okay so um, that's it on the triggers and targets. I did want to show you guys a couple of these testimonials where there's people doing quite well with our service and our triggers and targets. Uh, you can just see all those there, 89,000 in one month, um, 63,000 with just 6,000 over there. We have hedge fund managers running this. We have people doing it for their 401ks. We have people day trading, we have people um, investing for a longer term with these averaged uh, 9,000 plus 770 percent increase in their trading already profitable okay uh, all these things here we got 20 plus year subscribers there's somebody who turned 25k into 89k into 112k into 131k all right you see there so anyway um, on and on and on so I won't uh, keep you guys with that much longer but i do want to show you the uh es here and the actual triggers and targets we started this the first trigger was back in october of uh, 23 the day after the low we got an upside trigger okay so we squeezed it up to over here to fit it on the page all right let me just make this a full page if i can and the way it works here is um, if you buy a contract at each one of these triggers, so you have one contract, now you have two, now you have three, now you have four, now you have five, cumulatively, it's 108,000 potential profit. That's if you get 100% of the move, I want to urge, never get 100% of the move. I've done it once or twice, but uh, I'm always happy with 60 to 80% of the move. Uh, that was what one two three four five triggers into the April high then we had three downside triggers here Let me move that arrow. There we go three downside triggers there to that low again the potential on those you can see the points and profit there uh, Then we didn't do much on this move up and you can see it just barely made a new high and then went down again but we caught this move up here and we had four upside triggers and you can see the 53,000 on that one and, and since then we've had a downside trigger here uh, at 5621 on July 24th that's our most recent trigger and so far that's doing pretty good okay so triggers and targets um, are, are doing well you can see right there's our upside targets but we can get into that in a, a little bit later here okay don't want to forget to remind you guys um, to subscribe to our video channel if you haven't done so already don't forget the reminder bell and the like and comments below okay without further ado let's go we haven't done this in a while let's go to nvidia okay we are looking at an hourly chart from the all-time high in june and the different colors i keep uh, the um after hours or pre-market post-market prices please because um excuse me that's where they're hitting okay if I just do the cash market these targets are off a little bit so this includes the pre and post market you can see a or one down B or two up 
and here are let's make that big screen so we can get all this in okay here's where c equals a at 111.33 it went past that there's where c equals 1.618 of a at 95.27 okay i have a or one b or two and we'll see this in the other ones and the beauty of elliott wave is let's just say it's an a b c count okay then the c would usually go to the one to one ratio here it could go to the 1.618 but the key is to move after that okay so if it's a b c it'll be done and it'll go above the a wave high and above the b wave high and above the all-time high if it's an a b c correction it's over with c down and then you get new all-time highs and you pass these uh, prices here However, if it's a one, two, three, we'll get a four up and a five down. And the four up will hold below the wave one low of 115. This C or three is still developing, okay? There's still lower targets here. Since it went through the one to one, that means it's likely to hit the 1.618. It's more likely to be a third wave if it hits the 1618. And we'll have proof when the wave four stays below the wave one low hope that makes sense to you guys but that's the beauty of elliott way we know to the 100th of a point or a penny in the stock where it's wrong or where it's proven right and the first thing we always do when we make a chart and a trade is where is it wrong if you're playing for this third wave down wave four up should not go above 115 when it does you got a three wave abc correction and you're likely moving up above these okay uh wanted to point out these red lines here i may have to get a little bigger um view is you can see here let me see if i got that there's the three there let me see if i can squeeze all this in okay there's the one up the two down this is three so these red lines are the retracement levels for the larger degree wave four okay which would be these red lines here i think i can see them there they're really close to the retracement levels or the c levels okay so that's oh i got them written here 111.16 for the 382 for the fourth wave you can see four targets here that's right next to where c equals a there's no coincidence here guys the 50 percent is 103.78 and the uh, 618 is 95.97 which is within a point of the c or third wave 1.618 so here we've got downsides for c or three and here we've got downsides for the larger degree wave four so nice uh dart picture if you will hitting darts okay we'll see if this gets down there we're looking at 95 for the next actually 103 uh 50 but i believe it hit that at the 100 level so that's NVIDIA. We'll see how this shakes out. It'll be really interesting. But again, we have our upside and downside parameters. Uh, we know exactly where it's right and where it's wrong. And uh, we'll see which one of these plays out. The ABC and done. Or the 1, 2, 3 with a 4 up and a 5 to a lower low. Okay, let's move from NVIDIA. I want to get you guys to our um, newsletters because uh, it's been a while since we updated the... Um, Let's go with uh, this special interim report here that we put out for the S&P cash. Been a while since we updated our videos on YouTube. Okay, we had a key reversal day and we've had them before. They don't always work out, but uh, so far this one is. It's a four day or four step uh, classic trading pattern for a key reversal day. A key reversal day, this uh, chart doesn't show it because it's a 10 minute, but it's when, uh, when the market registers an outside day or a key reversal day when it makes um, to this uh, point it's the downside so it makes a lower low than the previous day and then closes below the previous day's low that happened in a lot of the indexes on August 1st okay so uh, that shows it there and we actually have uh, the classic four-day trading pattern in our video on demand subscription so uh, like 89 a month there's a lot of other things in there a lot of uh, educational um, videos and trading videos in there in addition to we update four things including the um, Bitcoin and Tesla and a couple others anyway day one our step one is to sell the higher open 
which it didn't open higher but sell the open really then there's two conditions for day one which was on the second which was friday i believe okay so um and the second condition condition it must close lower if it doesn't you're out okay and the previous i think it was two key reversals day key reversal days it didn't meet condition two so you're, you're out hardly nothing you're just out it, it doesn't work okay but if it does you go to day two okay and then the, the move below 5390 is the first signal that the market's setting its sights on our target you can see our targets there there's where uh, three equaled one and there's where three equaled 1.618 again a or one b or c uh i'm sorry b or two three or c we'll see how that plays out same rules apply same elliott wave rules as far as the wave four but we've got to let this third wave play out and this was pre-market open i believe on friday that was a special interim report for the cash and let me get that uh eight two uh pre-market open there there it is for the um es futures okay same thing just different numbers there's the key reversal day this is where we're we're keeping track by the way we had this ending diagonal back here on 716 where it's got overlap that's where you can see the overlap there one up two down three up four down five up okay that was a big signal for us which helped us identify a turning point it, whether it's um a, a moved short term or longer term we'll find out as this plays out here but that told us hey it's going down and sure enough we got five ways down and here we go off to the a and the b okay and we had a direct hit up there had a little overlap on that uh, the red and in that there but that open gap uh, got filled okay so this is what we're looking at in the uh futures okay and uh updates in red that was from our previous uh day that we showed you guys at least on the cash okay here's our wave three targets on the e minis which was friday i think we came close to hitting it okay yeah we needed to see a move below that 5432 low a move below the one or a wave low to make this viable again where is it wrong if it didn't go below there it's wrong and we're going up well it was proven right okay so there's our targets there in verbiage and uh to make a break where is it wrong 5721 the bigger picture there okay i don't know if we have much more on there there's the classic uh trading pattern there there's our uh disclaimer which we showed at the beginning okay and uh we've been looking for a change in trend since that october 2023 low we haven't seen one we have five steps and uh here you can see the five steps for a change in trend that's just been keeping us in the right pattern in the right wave if you will as the market's been going up since october of 23 we've been long we've been bullish we've had a lot of upside targets triggers and targets and hit some of the downside um corrections if you will along the way okay but uh you can read this for yourself here we need five waves down three waves up to a lower high another five waves down which we're in the process right now and then we've got two more steps after that okay and unless and until these steps uh for a, a signal of a change in trend or met the train trend remains up so we'll know if we look at it at the one and uh 10 minute charts for that signal okay so we got that we got the futures i want to show you guys a little more on the um on our monthly report for our annual subscribers so we cover a lot of things here okay let's see here there's our triggers and targets again 30 percent discount it's good for the life of the su subscription every month okay and there's there's the uh, profit on the uh, potential profit again on the triggers we have upside and downside which we showed you guys on the uh, e-mini futures okay there's our disclaimer there the key reversal day the steps again and then of course we got that um we got the achievement on the first day this was a uh, two which was friday okay sell sell the open lower low new low got it close below previous day got it market closes lower got it so we go on to pay to page <laughs> to day two okay which is in the futures it's today sunday 
at 6 p.m. That's when futures open. Um, so that's the next day, and, and we'll see. And here's the, uh, the conditions for day two. The market cannot exceed the high of the previous day. Place your stop above the day one, day one high. Market does not have to close lower. And then we got days three and four. You can see that again in our uh, video on demand subscription service, okay? So here's where we were on the pre-market open, okay? We had A or one down, two or B up. There was our targets right there. And at the end of the day, this is a post, let me make sure. It's a post-market close report, I would think so. Oh, that's the August monthly report, okay. My bad, but it's still, um, here's the end of the day on the cash. And you can see there, it came really close to hitting where it, the target's there. And we'll see how this plays out, okay? This is the S&P cash. Um, there we go, cash. Okay, that's before the market open on Friday on our pre-market open report for the cash. And there's uh, end of the day, what happened there. We'll see what uh, Sunday brings in the futures and Monday brings in the cash. Uh, we'll see. I, if it hits this 1.618, I think that uh, 1, 2, 3 is going to play out, which is uh, portends bigger declines along the way. Okay, uh, and this explains that right there. There's our Fibonacci time spirals. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, there's the time spirals on the S&P cash. Uh, again, we started at uh, 1228. That wasn't the orthodox top, nor was it the orthodox low. But uh, this goes all the way back to 1998 when we did it and um, we caught uh, where the market was turning. It wasn't on a lower high and it, that thing lasted and called um, major tops for seven years into 2006. I don't have that readily available, but that's what got me into the uh, Fibonacci time spirals. You can see it's catching highs and lows there. The next turn date again, 8.17. And there's our, um, our turn there with the... Uh, Key reversal day right there. Okay, this was uh, Friday. This was Thursday. There's that big red bar. Okay, uh, NASDAQ also had a key reversal. By the way, the, the NASDAQ is different. Well, first of all, the NASDAQ always leads on the way up and on the way down on these declines, historic declines back in um, 2000 to 2002 and 2007 to 2009. The NASDAQ lost way more than the Dow and the S&P. But the difference with the NASDAQ is this decline from the all-time highs. And by the way, the NASDAQ topped, topped in November of 21. The Dow and the S&P topped later in January of 22. There are divergences. These don't all move together at the same time. They haven't and they won't in the future. So you can see this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for wave A. There's no overlap here. Okay, in the Dow and the S&P, this fourth wave, wave high overlapped with the wave one low, which would be a leading diagonal triangle. It's still allowable in the Elliott wave rules, but the NASDAQ count is cleaner. So the, the NASDAQ is actually more likely the A down and the B up. You can see our B wave targets there. Um, so far, the high is on July 11th at 18671. It's right in between the B wave 1.272 and 1.414 Fibonacci multiples, which is typical in an expanded flat where you get an A down, a B up to above the beginning of A, and then a lower wave C. Okay, so we'll see how that plays out, but we like the expanded flat count on the NASDAQ just for this reason. Okay, and it's still within the, the B wave high in an expanded flat, the B wave usually runs a 1.272 or a 1.414, and this went right smack dab in the middle of it. Okay, so uh, again, we'll watch, see how that plays out. But again, the NASDAQ registered a key reversal day also, and I think I might have had that. Yeah, and then we look at it from the high there. Again, here, here you go. There's the verbiage on that, uh, the move from the A wave high is obvious five ways down with no overlap or leading diagonal like the Dow and the S&P. Okay, so on the hourly from the all-time high, we've got, I didn't put the A or B because this seems way more likely to be a one, two, three. Three should at least equal one. There's the target for the equality with wave one, and there's the 1.618 multiple 
with wave one. Okay, so that's what we're looking at the uh, NASDAQ. There's all that. Again, where is it wrong? A move above 18,671. Can't emphasize enough. We always know what Elliott wave, where we're wrong. Whenever we make a trade, whenever we do a chart, where is it wrong is the first question we ask that helps us to limit our losses and it helps us to be on the right side of the market. And as soon as we know we're wrong, where's the right count? It's there, it's math, it's absolute. Okay, moving on, here is the Dow. Um, here's the, the chart. We've been doing this for several months now, connecting the lows and running a parallel trend line with the highs. You can see it touched it there, it kissed it, it touched it there, it kisses. Maybe that's the kiss, kiss of death right there, okay? So you can see that, uh, that then this counts completely different. I didn't, the A and B is in there. You can see that A here and the B there, but this went higher than those typical 1.272 and 1.414s. It's still in play. It still could be an ABC, but I like this blue count better. You can see there, it came within a point of our target for a third wave. Again, this will play out if this four down, you can see the four targets here, if it goes below the wave one high of 34.712, then the B, A, B, C is in play. Four cannot go below the, the uh, high of wave one. Okay, so well-defined, and again, the 618 retrace would do it. It would still be above the wave one high. So we'll see if these things diverge or if the, the Dow um, takes, takes the same path as the NASDAQ and the S&P. Okay, so again, uh, there's a lot of people who say, well, the, this stock did this, so this index should do the same. No, they diverge all the time. I think back, uh, Tesla has had two uh, Fibonacci 786 retracements, and um, none of the indexes have, uh, and they're part of the indexes. So uh, it can happen. It happens all the time. And there's divergences between these indexes, as you can see. So we'll see how that plays out there, okay? see there was the, the C wave target and the wave three target and the actual right there. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, the bond market. We've been all over the bond market for so many years. I wish there was still rating services because we were number one timer before and I'm sure we'd be number one timer again. But the bonds, I may have that there. We did an interim report in early July, maybe the 11th. Let me see if I, I still have that there. This might be it. Okay, on the bond market, yeah, that uh, changed to a down on that day. We did have a wave one up and the wave four down somewhere in here went below what we had as a wave one. So immediately, we, hey, where's it wrong? It's wrong. Okay, where's, where's the right wave count? Here it is. Okay, so from that wave one high, by the way, we have a, a one up Roman numeral two down and we should get a three up but within that three up we have a one with a circle and then we have a two with a circle okay within that two we have an a down a b up there's where c equals a right there at 3.501 and it could be the c could do a double bottom here okay this was back on july 11th <clears throat> so we moved excuse me to a short uh position in interest rates and we have our targets okay so that's the history of the bond market. Here we are since then, since we had that trigger right there. By the way, I'm thinking about doing all the triggers and targets for everything, um, not just the uh, E-minis, but for everything. We'll see. We'll see. That's for down the road. Okay, but um, that's where we had that trigger. There's our target, the C equals A at 3.501. And so far, as of Friday, we've got down to 3.787. And you can see the A wave low is 3.783. It's possible that the C could create a double bottom and be the end of wave two. We'll know that because we'll look at the smaller degree uh, one to 10 minute charts to see how it's developing. If it's looking like five waves to the upside on a one minute, we'll know. Okay, that's why we like looking at the short term for entries and exits and changes in trend. Okay, the daily is not going to, sh it'll show up in the one minute and 10 minute before it does in the daily. And they're, they're just fractals of each other. So that's the beauty of Elliott Wave. Um, anyway, that's what we're looking at right there in the uh, treasuries. And um, we moved to a short position in rates. 
on 7-Eleven, which I showed you guys. There was our verbiage there, okay? And um, that move down for wave C uh, will complete the larger degree wave 2, which is that 2 right there. I think I even mentioned in here um, that it completes a larger degree wave 2. I may have even mentioned here, yeah, that is so close to a double bottom within a couple thousands of a point, like four of them, okay? So um, I just put this out there because I was thinking out loud when I typed this. Uh, we may move to a long position early instead of looking for that C equals A because it's, it's so close to a double bottom. We'll see how, again, we'll look at it and uh, get our um, our bond market, not a bond our annual subscribers, the uh, first tip on this thing with that. Uh, we'll see how that plays out from there. Okay, that's that's really interesting. Okay, move, there's all of our triggers and targets on the bond market. You can see, we've had a lot of direct hits on this thing, up and down, going back um, a ways, going back years, actually. And here's our gold market, okay? Uh, this is our daily bar going back to 2015. You know, we've got a one up, a two down in parentheses, three up equals a 2.618. There was an A, B, C, wave four, came within five points of our target, direct hit. Then we had a one up, one of five, okay? Follow me here, there's one in parentheses, two in parentheses, three in parentheses, four in parentheses. This fifth wave looks like it's extending. There's excuse me, one of five, there's a wave two retracement, another direct hit, then we've got this thing unfolding here. We had a, a, a trigger and a target right there at 21.47. Here are our upside targets for wave three of five. I played it all the way out to the 3.618, okay, but so far it's, it's under that uh, 1618 between the one to one and the 1618 right there at 24.83 so far. Okay, we'll see how that goes. It keeps going higher and higher. There's that high there, 2483.76 on July 17th. Our next target is 2567.59, and that's the 1.618. There's our triggers and targets on that. There's all of that. There's our past triggers and targets on that. And there's our time spirals. And I think that may do it. Let's see, did we do the NQ? Let me look at the NQ here. I want to give you guys that too. There's the, the NASDAQ E-mini futures. We do that uh, once a week. That's another subscription service that we have. And there is the play out there in the NASDAQ 100 futures. Topped on 7-Eleven. There's one down. There's two up. There's our wave three targets. The 1.0 and the 1.618 again with the Nasdaq and the futures. I don't put the ABC because of that uh, that initial decline from the November high makes it look like it's really. I'll just show you guys again. Let me get to the Nasdaq here. You know the Dow and the S and P all have that uh, that overlap. There, this decline was a pure five waves. So this looks like a B. So the move down from that high looks like an impulsive wave. One, two, three, instead of A, B, C. Okay, let's uh, leave you guys with, um, we'll leave you guys with the cash here, okay? There's the S&P cash, or we could go with the uh, futures here. Where is that? Here we go. With the futures, that's what we're looking at. Uh, Looking forward to the open later on today. This is uh, early morning on Sunday. It's less than 12 hours to the open. Uh, lots of opportunity there. We'll see where this plays out. If we move up and test this high, this low, or we extend down. Okay, long, uh, a long video today. We hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, take care, everyone.